Welcome back everybody to my abandoned house in Japan Akia video. At the end of the last episode I managed to complete one of the workbenches and also lifted a lot of the paving blocks to start the lawn area. So I thought I'd give you a quick rundown on the plan for the paving and the lawn area. You can see the paving on the right here is uh, it's covered with plastic at the moment but there were no soldiers or support blocks um, so the edge collapsed so basically I dug it out. The white strip you see on the far right will be uh, a French drain and the green area will be uh, the lawn. Coming round now towards the front of the house, uh, the blue area you see will be the shape of the paving and the green area will be the lawn coming all the way up to the actual front of the house. Just a quick close up here of the damage caused by not putting the soldier blocks around the outside and uh, basically water washes away the sand supporting the blocks. Anyway, on to the first part of today's video, which is completing the edging which runs along the edge of the garage here. Because each of the main paving blocks uh, comes up at an angle to meet the garage, uh, each of these blocks I have to kind of cut to the correct angle and the correct size. What you can't see particularly clearly on this video is um, the edge of the garage here, the foundations or the concrete foundations under the garage actually stick out under this paving for about um, 20 centimeters or about 6 to 8 inches. So I'm actually going to concrete these final blocks in place. I just want to make sure that they, they don't have a chance to move at all. Switching over to a different angle here, I'm working back backwards towards the main gate posts. If you hadn't guessed by now, I'm uh, sick of paving. <laughs> As you can see the sun is going down and uh, I will be stopping soon and uh, coming back the following day to kind of try and finish up this stretch. And the following morning it's more of the same really, uh, just placing the blocks in, making sure they level, cutting them to the right angles and setting them in. Once this edging had set and dried, I came back and put uh, polymeric sand. I didn't film it, but um, put the sand down and brushed it into any gaps and uh, was then able to use the compactor just to make sure everything's level. 
The final step really is to go over this area with a pressure washer, but I think I'll hold off on that until um, I've done more of the paving. As per usual, if you like what you're seeing, please subscribe and like, and of course I'll try and reply to all comments uh, below. Thanks again.
finally this area has been paved um, of course it needs a bit of cleaning up um, but at least it's all down and it's looking pretty reasonable I think Moving on to the second part of the video, um, this is the same evening. Uh, I've now started to make um, the caps, post caps, for the main gate posts. These are quite a bit bigger than the first ones that I made, um, and the design has to be a little bit different. I started off by um, building a wooden frame for the outside. Um, and then um, obviously the pieces for the middle here I'm just using some wire because later I'd have to pull a cable uh, through the actual concrete itself to a conduit within the concrete. As before the concrete cap will need uh, rebar inside to make sure it's strong enough. Uh, here I'm just using some caulking to kind of fill any small gaps um, for the, ready for the concrete to go in. So the design of this is quite different. Um, the original concrete caps that I built, the power for the lights on the top goes directly through the center of the cap. Unfortunately, the concrete posts um, that these caps are for um, are, as far as I know, solid. So any cabling will need to come up the side of the cable um, through the cap itself and then out through the middle. Um, so the conduit for this is going to look a little bit different. Um, as you can see in the video, I'm having to work out um, where the conduit will go, where the conduit will come out, and how I'm going to be able to feed a power cable from the side um, to emerge in the middle. To give you a better idea of what I'm talking about, the post on the left here you can see the power cable could actually come through the blocks themselves and come up through the centre of the cap, whereas the one on the right here, the later ones, the block itself is solid, so I have to bring power up the outside. I hope that makes sense. Uh, here you'll see a final shot of the mould ready for concrete to go in. Next up, it's time for concrete to go into that mould. Uh, you may notice that this time I've put the mould itself onto a trolley. Um, it allows me to kind of tap onto the side of the trolley and it releases a lot of the air bubbles that may be trapped in the concrete and will ruin the finish. It's made things a lot easier. And the following week, following the weekend, I should say, it's just a case of removing the wooden frame um, and taking this out of the mould. Mm. <laughs> 
Unfortunately, these post caps are quite a lot bigger than the previous ones and are extremely difficult for me on my own to move around. Um, so I have to be pretty careful uh, or I'll just end up on my foot. Um, with my luck, it's probably going to happen anyway. And there's the first one out of the mold. It's actually looking quite a lot better than the first two that I made. A lot less bubbles and the edges are a lot cleaner so I'm happy with that. several weeks later uh, here's the second one ready to come out of its mold And there it is, the final post cap out of its mold. Uh, they just need to dry for at least a week or so um, before they're ready to go up. And this is when disaster struck. Uh, this is the first post. Uh, you'll notice that um, the post itself is actually hollow. Just had a layer of mortar across the top, so I was of the understanding that it was hollow and therefore created all of my post cap designs based on that. Um, here's just a, a quick recap of exactly what happened. Um, here you see me removing the layer of mortar on the top. I didn't want to create too much damage by using a jackhammer, um, so I just started doing this by hand.
was at this point that um, after reviewing the video uh, I noticed that the mortar between the top layer of blocks uh, had come loose and if you look carefully you'll see that the block actually moves outward slightly and it was then that I discovered there's a big hole in the centre of this post. Before putting the new cap on the top, uh, I just wanted to check that um, the electrics were working properly and that uh, we had continuity because obviously this power line goes to the two previous posts and lamps that I had installed before. And it's all good. Uh, the only thing I really needed to do next was just make sure that the wires you can see running up the side of the post here uh, were nice and clean and ready to be installed. It was at this point that uh, when I went to lift the new cap onto the top of the post I realised that the blocks themselves were loose and the whole thing was just filled with soil. More work. The only option for me is to actually take this entire top layer off, clear out the centre of the post and put it together properly. Coming up in the next episode, I have to move this enormous boulder, which uh, in the rain actually rolled across my paving line, and hopefully repair those posts um, so that I can get the caps on. Thanks to everyone for watching, and uh, for those of you that have subscribed and made comments, it's much appreciated. Take care, have a good day.